Hello, welcome to this complete Revit tutorial. When you open Revit, the homepage shows up where you can start a new project or open an existing one. Revit projects come in two types. Models are complete projects made by several compositions put together, while families are single compositions that you can use in one or multiple projects. Both types are categorized into architectural projects for buildings, structural for materials and foundations, and systemic for tubes and conductors. To start a new architectural project, click on New and select Model, choosing between Imperial or Metric Scale. At this point, the main interface opens, with the main preview in the center and several panels on the left side. To hide or show any panel, go to View, User Interface, At the top, you get the ribbon bar with all the tools inside Revit. In this video, we will see the ones inside the Build section under the Architecture tab to realize a simple building. Some of these buttons collect multiple tools, accessible by clicking on the arrow. You can also hover over any tool to get more information. The preview shows your project from top to bottom in a view called Level 1, as the view shows at the top. This view represents the ground plane and includes grain lines called scope boxes, useful in case of larger projects. You can hide them by right-clicking on any scope box, then selecting Hide and View category. Let's start by drawing a floor with the Architectural Floor tool. When you enable it, you enter the Edit mode, as you can see by the green Modified tab at the top with several drawing tools inside. You can drop lines, arcs, and splines by clicking on the preview. Close the shape, or press the Escape key to finish. You can also draw rectangles, polygons, and circles by clicking twice. If you make a mistake, use the Escape key to undo any drawing in progress, or press Ctrl and Z to undo any drawing made. Drawings are shown as pink sketches on the preview to approve or undo with the mode buttons at the top. By clicking on Finish Edit Mode, you approve the sketches and render them into the desired floor. You can always edit any rendered object by double-clicking on it to enter Edit Mode again and work with its sketches. While you continue drawing in Edit Mode, you create a single object, even if its sketches seem independent. To create independent objects, Enable any drawing tool while not modifying any existing sketch in edit mode. To take a look at the preview, use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, and hold down the shift key with the right mouse button to pan. Drawing aids are very useful while editing sketches. You can snap to object keypoints, such as endpoints, midpoints, and intersections of any sketch or approved drawing. To turn off snaps, go to Manage, Snaps. You also get dashed guidelines to follow extended directions, and instant measurements of length and angles using the default project units. You can adjust these by going to Manage and selecting Project Units. Once the floor is set, you can start adding walls. Enable the Wall tool and drop the walls along the floor contours by using the same drawing tools seen for the floor. Walls automatically join when they intersect. You can also get a complete 3D view on the project by going to View, 3D View, to show the 3D view cube on the right. Click on any of its faces or vertices to adjust the view, or simply click and drag on it to orbit, or click and drag its base to rotate around the project height. You can also show the full navigation wheel to pan, orbit, and zoom in and out. The 3D preview shows height of the walls that you can check by selecting a wall and go to the Measure Between Two References tool under Modify. Click on the two points you are interested in and get the precise measurement. You can also drop further walls with the wall tool in the 3D view. 
and adjust their height level at the top. Note that the walls always have their base laying on the ground plane. To customize a wall, double-click on it to enter the edit mode and reshape its basic sketch, as you have seen for the floors. Levels and elevations can ease your design by providing different and fixed points of view over your project. You find these in the Project Browser panel on the left, where you can double-click on any view to open it in a dedicated tab, or right-click to rename or delete it. Levels, also called floor plans, or 2D views showing the project from top down to a specific height, such as ground level, or 0 meters for level 1, and 3,600 millimeters from the ground for level 2. Elevations are 2D views showing the project from east, north, south, or west, helping you check height and depth. To create a new level, open an elevation view and go to Architecture, Levels. Fix two points horizontally to create a new height level, represented as a dashed line. This comes with no heads by default, but you can go to Edit Type on the left to add it. Press the Escape key to apply. You can also create a new floor plan view associated to the new level by going to View, Planned Views. To make a new elevation, open any level view and go to View, Elevation. Click on the preview to place it, shown as a circle with an arrow indicating its direction. Press the Escape key to apply. You can adjust the elevation by selecting its circle and using the Modify tools at the top. Make sure to double click on the circle to open the elevation view, showing what falls within its range. With walls in place, you can start adding components like doors and windows. Use the door tool to drop doors, laying on any level. Enable the window tool to place windows freely on the walls. Doors and windows are ready-made Revit families that you can edit by selecting these and changing the type on the Properties panel on the left. You can also add furniture, tubes, and other objects with the component tool. Now let's see how to add a roof. Enable the roof tool and select the level as roof base. You can always change this level from architecture, work plane on the right using show and set to show and adjust it. Use the drawing tools to define the roof shape following the wall contours. Apply the roof to render it, and decide whether to attach the walls to the roof. If attached, the roof follows the walls if they are modified. Roofs get automatic slopes for each side. If the Define Slope option in the top left corner is on, with slopes shown as triangles in Edit Mode. To get a flat roof, simply disable the Define Slope option. And, if you want, you can customize the roof under the Modify tab, adding points and lines where needed, using the Escape key to apply. At this point, enable Modify sub-elements to move these points and lines, defining the slopes for the roof. Press Escape to apply and see the result. To adjust your project preview, select a different visual style at the bottom, from a simple wireframe to a realistic view. This one shows the materials applied to your objects that you can change by selecting the object and going to Properties, Edit Type on the left. For a more complete rendering, go to View, Render instead. To modify any object, click on it to select it and use the blue nodes to adjust its height and the delete key to remove it. Double-click to edit its sketches, dragging nodes to move, rotate, and adjust height. You can also use the modify tools at the top. Save your Revit projects with Ctrl and S. Revit models are saved as .rvt files to reopen and edit your work at any time. 
Thank you very much for watching this guide. Make sure to check more free content on our official website and our YouTube channel, not only for CAD modeling, but also to learn about photo editing up to music production.